This is an O-Bike. It looks like a fun little yellow vehicle for cruising around town. But O-Bike was no normal bike share scheme. In fact, it lasted less than one year in Melbourne and caused chaos on the streets and rivers of the city. So what went wrong? This is a wild story about a shadowy organisation, millions of dollars of misappropriated funds, and I try to answer the question, what happened to thousands of O-Bikes? Around a thousand O-Bikes hit the streets of Melbourne in June 2017, seemingly overnight. And here's how your O-Bike. Download the app, pay a $69 deposit, complete your ride, and it seems the optional step was this, dump or vandalise the bike. Plenty of people have complained about the new yellow O-Bikes being abandoned on Melbourne footpath. Bikes are affected because of uh, these incidents in terms of vandalism, uh, but we are confident that we can change that. That's Chetan. He was the communications lead for O-Bike, and I think he had one of the hardest jobs in Australia. His role was to confront the media and plead with people not to destroy the system. Now, I can't show you every incident because it would take way too long. So instead, I've put a little montage together that tries to sum up one year of O-Bikes. challenges for any bike share system in Australia is that of helmets. Australia is one of the few places in the world that mandates helmets for all cyclists. When Boris Johnson came to Australia, when he was Lord Mayor, he was talking up the Boris bike system that's really widely used in London and actually said that helmets would dissuade people from using it. And in true Boris fashion, he took a ride in Melbourne, not wearing a helmet and got called out for it in the media. Arnold Schwarzenegger is someone else who was famously pulled over by the Melbourne police for not wearing a helmet and if they're not going to give the Terminator a shot, there's no way that share cyclists can get away with not using a helmet. So what did O-Bikes do? Well, they purchased a bunch of these and their approach was to simply clip these on to the bikes themselves. And how did that go for them? Helmets. Now, well, I had a caller earlier saying he'd seen plenty of bikes but no helmets. What happens with yes. helmets? We were surprised to see that too many of them were getting nicked. As a sort of Being solution. stolen? Yep. So how many helmets have been stolen? Um, I would say, so you know, uh, about 40% of the helmets are stolen out there. So is 40% 400? Yes, 400%. it is. It is quite high. Yes, that, that's, why, that's why I mentioned it, were, it did catch us with surprise. I, I just can't imagine a, this scenario working out. I mean, I think there are certainly bike sharing options that work well, but that's where there's, there's a dock to put them. 40% of the helmets have gone missing within the first week. I can't see it not ending badly. And this dockless feature would cause real issues. We're not sure how these came up to end up in the middle of Albert Park Lake. Parks Victoria rangers think the rideshare bikes were put there overnight by someone in a small boat. They have since been removed. And as a city that's so well known for its street art, artists got in on the action, adding bikes to their toolkit of different artistic mediums. Oh, how very Melbourne. Grungy graffiti lane on one side, million dollar house on the other. Around the corner, this. 11 dockless O-bikes arranged in a rainbow. And that's a good thing about Melbourne. You know, you can uh, turn any corner, you get this kind of thing. And our man Chetan was called in to give his opinion. And of course he loved it, but he had to do his best. Please don't turn our bikes into cool art routine very Melbourne-ish, um, but end of the day, uh, you know, it is not there to be to be used for that purpose. It's a great use of the O-Box. Keep it out of the era. And while this piece of art was short-lived, it wasn't just street artists who got in on the action, comedians had to go too. I think it's fair to say we've all been walking around the city at some point and thought, I wish I had a red or yellow bike to <laughs> chop over. <laughs> We have a bike dumping system. You take the bike, ride it around, then dump it wherever you like when you're finished. 
This is the Yarra River, and this is the place most synonymous with the dumping of O-bikes. And in fact, it became such a problem that the O-bike company had to hire a boat and fish the bikes out of the Yarra. Hidden beneath the Yarra's surface, dumped and damaged O-bikes are dragged from the water. As you can see, this boat is already full. At least 25 O-bikes have been picked up in a short 100 metre stretch of the Yarra River. And these workers still have to go all the way down towards Richmond. That count finished at 42. We know Australians are free-spirited and they will get behind what is um, what we what we know uh, to be the future of transportation. And we really urge them to sort of do it at a faster pace. <laughs> And I think they're some of the most iconic pictures of this whole saga. And at the time, it's what a lot of people spoke about. Bikes being thrown in or fished out of the river. So two years later, I wanted to know, is it possible to go O-bike fishing? Can I go and catch myself an aquatic O-bike? To do this, one of the first places I started was the mystery of the Albert Park Lake bike pile. Now, I know this area well, it's in my neighborhood. And in my research, I couldn't see that anyone had actually pulled bikes out of the lake. They had the Yarra, they had the Maribyrnong. So my theory was this. If people have put the effort to getting them onto a boat to the middle of the lake, surely some of them might have ended up at the bottom. So one of the first things I did is I checked the Albert Park Lake website and it turns out that fishing is allowed in the lake, but only for licensed recreational fishermen. So five minutes and $10 later I was in. And you better believe that I signed up for my free fortnightly copy of Fish e Facts. And I recruited my friend Glenn to get in on the action and like all good projects, we headed to Bunnings to start building out our O-bike fishing rig. Then we headed to the lake. Now it had rained in the day or two before we were there and the visibility in the lake was just awful. And the first attempts were a bit of a failure, catching only a log or two. So I live nearby and did some jogging during the lockdown period and saw something that I think is an O-bike. So we're gonna head there and try our luck. So while we couldn't see anything, I did try the spot where I remember seeing something which looked a bit like a bicycle. And I'd caught something. Now if it was an O-bike, the two years of sediment build-up and my complete lack of gym routine meant that I personally couldn't move it. So I tagged out with Glenn and took over the filming. And this was it, our first O-bike. Or maybe more correctly, our first half an O-bike. It was a good feeling to have a win. And by now we were buoyed by our success. So we had another go and we quickly found One, something two. else. Now this time it was properly stuck and genuinely needed both of us. And this took a lot of effort to get out. Oh, it's a twofer, is it? Did we do a double? <laughs> and it was a double header, as we recreational fishermen say. This was quite the catch. A lot of people in the park really liked what we're doing and stopped to get photos. So we took the bike home, gave it an initial clean up to see how usable it was and two years in a lake is not great for any bike, so it was in pretty poor condition. So to answer my own question, it turns out yes, O-bike fishing is still a viable hobby. By the start of 2018, councils, the EPA were getting more concerned about the business. Yarra O-bikes had become a citywide meme, but I wanted to understand what was happening more on the inside of the company. And I thought there was one person who could help. Chetan, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good person. So my job, I, so I joined in as the head of marketing, involved with the conversations with the local councils. Um, I did a lot of media, uh, especially the days when the bikes were pulled out of the river. Um, you know, there was a lot of media attention and it was part of that storytelling. It was a, it was a model, it was quite um, brave or brazen in the sense to sort of go too soon, too quick. Um, but it was, uh, you know, it was an effort nonetheless. Um, I wasn't sort of just thinking about O bike as a, I was always sort of thinking about bike sharing. So my message was always about how can bike sharing be implemented into Melbourne or a city like Melbourne or, or cities around Australia, and then, um, you know, how do people take it, and how can we sort of transition, that's have that smooth transition. But obviously, you know, what happened uh, happened. Chathan was a legend and shared a lot of interesting stories about his time there. And even though he had and continues to have a love for sustainable transport, could see what was wrong with the company and the business model. So we quit and actually took some time off to recover. And it was in the months following this that things took a darker turn and really started to go bad. The attackers who were on O-bikes spotted their victims on the other side of the Yarra and rode over to rob them. The train has to get the brakes real quick. 
Bicycles have previously been used in other parts of the world as bombs, and that could be repeated here. He's being asked to help hunt down a vandal who threw a bicycle at a metro train carrying 120 people. The O-bike was thrown from the William Barrack Bridge in... I'll be the one to have to say this, but I think this shows the thin veneer of civilization that we are living under. <laughs> it's Lord of the Flies for share bikes. Like, we can't be trusted with our own... making up our own rules. Like... Oh, I'm, I'm with Rick. It's end of civilization. <laughs> A lot of the analysis at the time seemed to say that this was a good system that people treated poorly. And this was most commonly summed up as, this is why we can't have nice things. It was such a common form of analysis that I really think it's worth reflecting on here and actually deconstructing. Is this true? Is that a good summary of what happened? Or is it a little bit more complex than that? Firstly, the we in that phrase implies that Melbourne or Australia was an outlier in this program. And while it's true we did put our own artistic spin on things, the fact is that every country that had O-bikes had similar results. And it's worth noting that Melbourne has had bike share systems both before and after O-bikes without these problems. Melbourne academic Peter Chambers analysed the scheme and produced a fired up and in-depth article about it. And the central thesis was that O-bikes was never really about bikes. In fact, the most spot on commentary at the time was by then Mayor Robert Doyle who said, Let's get this plain, it's not a bike share scheme. This is a way to generate enormous amounts of venture capital. That's their business model, the whole point of it. This is a kind of a shadowy organisation. There is no investment in Melbourne, in urban infrastructure in Melbourne, no rates, and they are privatising the public realm. This is a company that secured $45 million in venture funding and launched a cryptocurrency. But how well did they resource this program in Australia? Well, while it was always a small operation, it's believed that when it was in its final phase, they had one single employee for all of Australia. And it wasn't long before the government would clamp down. O-bike plague has been declared an environmental issue with the EPA stepping in. The Singapore-based operator will be fined $3,000 if O-bikes blocking footpaths aren't removed within two hours. This isn't about cycling, this isn't about bikes, this is about a business that's come into Victoria with no regard for our environment. The company's been notoriously difficult to contact and didn't respond to Seven News requests for comment. So in their dying days, how did they respond? Well, one of the things they did was take the refund deposit button off their app. They then changed their terms of service so they could take your refund and convert it to 16 months of VIP membership just days before they shut the program down. And then the inevitable happened. Bike share company O-Bike is closing down in Melbourne. Much maligned, share bike operator O-Bike could be about to abandon Melbourne less than 12 months after setting up on the city streets. Hallelujah, O-Bike is the latest to go under. And it wasn't just in Australia, the whole company went into liquidation, transferring $10 million out of the country to Hong Kong in their final days, with police investigating the misappropriation of funds. And they still owe millions of dollars on refunds to users. So with Obike withdrawing from the country, with the company going into liquidation and with unpaid deposits, you might think that that's where the story ends. But as I researched this, what happened next was one of the most surprising things of this whole crazy story. Obike wasn't the only big bike share system to go under at this time. So this means there were tens of thousands of bikes in China that were suddenly being liquidated. An entrepreneur from Myanmar, Mike Than Tun Win, saw this as an opportunity and he swooped in. Recognising the need for transport for poor kids across his country to access school, he saw this as a once in a generation opportunity. He bought up thousands of bikes, navigated customs and has deployed them across the country. He set up a charity, Less Walk, and is turning this first world problem into a third world opportunity. And you can get in on it. For 35 US dollars, a donation will fund a bike and its deployment. And while they've done a lot of deployments and I can't show you all of it, here's a montage that shows you one year of Less Walk. Over to you. I invite you to share this with anyone who loved or hated O bikes, or maybe someone who threw one into the Yarra. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe for more and follow along with what we do with our O bike. I'm Julian O'Shea. That's it from me.